Stop trying to learn YouTube. That's it, that's the video. But if you want to know what you should do instead to be a successful YouTube person, then keep watching. Because I have five very unusual but very effective tips for you. Tips that none of the YouTube tutorial channels will tell you, because to be perfectly frank, they don't know what they're talking about. A lot of them are run by marketing majors or marketing professionals who know all of the fancy words and are very, very good salesmen, pushing you to buy their courses, their software, or forward you to their moneysome affiliate links. They're not here to help you, they're here to sell you something. And a lot of them will appeal to authority by flashing a silver of a play button or two, but don't let these fool you. Anyone who is willing to smash their head against a, a purely metaphorical wall on this platform long enough can get one of these. In fact, I have two, which is more than one. And, and, and I actually even have a big one. Very big. Now, why should you listen to me over anyone else who has uh, the big gold thing? Well, honestly, no reason. Everyone who has something like this probably has something valuable to teach you, but that's not most of the channels I'm talking about. So here are my five unusual tips for YouTube. Tip number the first one. Stop trying to learn YouTube. I already said this, but it bears repeating. You should spend less time studying YouTube as a platform and more time studying the kind of videos you want to make, the niche those videos exist in, and the needs of the audience watching those videos within that niche. When you're first getting into YouTube, there's a sort of mystique around the platform. You know you've got your super secret algorithm, your special SEOs and all sorts of thumbnail hacks, and it's all just a big vat of nothing. I mean, yes, it's important to know things like how to make good thumbnails, but that's not studying YouTube because a good thumbnail is subjective and it's about how that thumbnail catches the attention of your audience and how it compares to others within your niche. Stuff like that. And you know what? I'm gonna give this away right now. Almost everything comes back to the audience. The root of everything are the needs of human beings and how you meet those needs. Which means that you've gotta be a lot less focused on YouTube and a lot more focused on people. YouTube is after all a platform. It's a tool for distribution. And focusing on learning YouTube is the equivalent of wanting to make movies and spending all of your time studying studying the engineering of a cinema projector. You're definitely learning a lot of information, but not a lot of it is actually gonna help you make a movie. Well, here's another example. It's like saying, I want to write a book, so I'd better study how paper is made. Which is cool and all, and by the end of the study, you've decided what page format you want. Maybe you wanna go for a nice A5, or do like an A5. You've also decided which font, whether it's hardcover or softcover, and perhaps even which publisher that you want to print the book. However, you still don't know anything about actually writing the book. There is no YouTube secret to success, and you should immediately ignore any channels that try to take you down that path. Instead, you should be focused on studying the thing it is you actually want to make. For example, gaming videos, great. I, I like gaming. No, I don't, that's a lie. Um, pe people like gaming, there's an audience for them. So figure out what kind of games people like to watch. Then figure out how they want to watch them. One example would be, say, video timing. Does this game's audience prefer short burst, 15 minute style stuff, or do they prefer long form, one hour plus kind of stuff? Then study other people making the same kind of videos? Figure out why certain creators are more popular than other certain creators? Because the answer to that is almost certainly going to be because they meet the needs of the audience better. And that, that's the thing it is that you want to do. So spend less time studying YouTube. Got it? Great. Onwards to tip number two. Don't spend too much time in your niche. This seems a bit counterintuitive since I, man on the internet, just told you to study other creators making the same kind of videos that you're interested in. However, this can become very problematic if that's all you study, because then you're actively inserting yourself into an echo chamber and it hinders creativity. If all you study is one niche, then you're going to come to the conclusion that there is only one optimal way to make those kind of videos. And there isn't, there are endless ways to present content. For example, in the book, niche, you tend to encounter almost exactly the same formula with each creator, which is a face cam in a stark modern vault room with an Ikea bookshelf in the background to show off all of their book cred. And I think stuff like that can become a bit of a circle jerk because people see one thing that works well for one person and then it gets endlessly replicated as if that's the only possible way to do it. Now, the reason why this is bad for you, the, the person watching this video, is because when you're starting out, you need something to make yourself stand out. It's no good to just sit there and go, hey guys, booktuber 5656, here coming at you with another another book kind of video that you've all probably seen before because everyone else has this exact same format. That's why it's always important to keep your eyes outside of your niche, widen your gaze. Because if you just get caught up copying the meta, then you're not really innovating. In fact, you're not at all innovating.
invading, you're doing the opposite, and your chances of breaking through become significantly worse. That doesn't mean you need to be the Michelangelo-esque creative genius of your generation, you just need outside input from other unrelated niches. So here's a good example from my own fictional pirate niche. Manu, better known as Ohara, has a really unique video setup that nobody else in One Piece or even anime YouTube really comes close to. However, if you look at the photography and tech areas, then this setup starts to look very familiar. And that makes sense because Manu is passionate about photography and filmmaking in general. But you know, if all he did was look into the anime world, then to this day, he and, and probably all of us would just stick to using screenshot slideshows. But taking the established meta from the photography niche and applying it to the anime niche, all of a sudden, very fresh and unique content. And this is why I don't actually watch a lot of channels who make the same kind of videos as I do, because even on a subconscious level, I do not want to adopt what they're doing. I want to keep bringing people something hopefully different, which is why I also have the following tip. Tip number the third, study what you hate. So we're gonna take this a step further because we all have creators that we don't enjoy watching that just so happen to be extremely popular. Pay attention to them because they have lessons they can teach you. I mean, yeah, you don't personally like them, but there is some sort of magic happening there. And I point this out specifically because we human people have this habit of just dismissing anything we don't like. We make excuses for it. Like, oh, that guy's only popular because he uses the clickbaits. And that's a very lazy dismissal of a channel that could have some very important lessons to teach you. So don't make excuses for the success of others. Find reasons. From my own personal experience, I don't dislike the channel Linus Tech Tips. However, at the same time, I have absolutely no interest in technology. To me, it all sounds the same sort of like, hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at the, the GPUX 6980 inch 5000 plus ultra model 2. It all just sounds like complete gibberish and I don't care. I, I just don't care. But from time to time, I still watch those videos because the way that they're packaged and presented on this channel in particular is a masterclass. Especially when it comes to thumbnails because they have an extremely difficult task of making very bland looking tech parts look extremely exciting or extremely disappointing or extremely something or other. Basically assigning some sort of emotion to it that makes me, a guy who doesn't care about tech at all, feel like I need to click that video and find out. So don't dismiss the things that you have minimal or even no interest in. Okay, look, so I once tried to watch mukbang videos. Like I gave it a serious go, more of a go than you probably should. And I had to stop because they just made me physically ill. I don't get it and I don't think I'll ever get it, but I did try. And for the most part, you'll find more valuable nuggets of information than you do complete cluelessness. And even if you don't end up immediately using that knowledge, it just helps to know because it gives you another sliver of insight into people. And if this knowledge happens to come from someone you don't like, then I'm sure you'll have no qualms with stealing from them, which is tip number four, steal stuff. Now we need to be careful here because this word has some rather violent connotations in my niche. And I'm sure the people who don't like me on Twitter and Reddit are gonna take this out of context, but every sector of the art steals. They often like to call it paying homage, which I find ironic because that English word in and of itself is stolen from French. And I want to be clear, there is a big difference between stealing and plagiarizing. In this case, the word steal is referring to embracing the work of others with the freedom of being able to transform, remix, and reimagine that work. And it often applies to stealing elements rather than the full work. It's kind of like the classic argument of YouTube transformative content. You are taking someone else's work, but you're using it in a transformative context. That's how you steal. For example, in a recent thumbnail I made, I took the Max Power Master Roshi form from Dragon Ball and applied it to a One Piece character to exude the feeling of overwhelming power. I took one element from a thing that I knew and applied it to a different context. And probably the best example of an awesome thief would be Quentin Tarantino. His films are packed with scenes, costumes, story ideas, characters, and sets ripped directly from other films because he has an encyclopedic knowledge of cinema. And so he can pick and choose a buffet of elements to make his own transformative films. Some people prefer to use the word borrow rather than steal? I don't because borrow implies that you're going to give it back, which which is impossible. But if you see something you like, give it a try. Just don't completely copy that thing. Take the element and adapt it. Oh, and also one more thing. Forget the algorithm. Forget the word algorithm entirely. Remove it from your lexicon if you have to, because you don't need it and having access to it will only harm you. A lot of advice for new creators is how to structure your videos to the algorithm. And as a result, when a lot of people underperform, they blame the algorithm. Does the algorithm exist? Yeah. 
but the algorithm is part of the platform, which going back to the first tip is a tool. It's not some sort of magic entity that you can like crack to ensure success. And at the same time, it's also not some sort of nefarious presence that's working against you. The YouTube algorithm is boiling it down to its simplest form, a function of human desire. A person clicks on a video that they like the look of, they watch that video, and as a result, YouTube serves that person more videos like that one. With every click and with every second of watch time, you are telling YouTube what you want to see more of. And therefore, the algorithm is a function of human needs. The reason why people focus on the algorithm is because the platform did once function completely through cold data such as keywords, but we have long since departed from those days, and now YouTube studies the habits of each individual watcher. Which is why if the word algorithm ever comes up, I want you to substitute it with the word audience. For example, ah, why doesn't the algorithm like my video? We change that to, why doesn't the audience like my video? Because if the audience did like it, then the algorithm would only serve it further. And it's quite funny because people who rely on the algorithm usually have this huge double standard. When a video does well, they're like, wow, people really liked my video. And then when it does badly, it's like, oh man, the algorithm is shadow banning my video, evil algorithm. And for whatever reason, that logical disconnect is allowed to exist in their minds. But whenever I say stuff on this channel, like say the ideal video length, I'm not talking about it in terms of an algorithm. In that case, I would mean the ideal video length for a person. To illustrate, I believe the ideal length of a Grand Line review video is between 10 to 15 minutes. Because the bulk of my audience are in their 20s, probably have very busy lives studying or working, mostly living in highly urbanized areas, and so their entertainment needs have to fit into that lifestyle. And I think a 10 to 15 minute video works for that. You can watch it while you're commuting to work, you can watch it in the shower, you can watch it doing the dishes, on the toilet, during your lunch break, whatever. It just fits. And if people have longer gaps of time that need filling, well, you could watch two videos, perhaps even three or four, I don't know. I've got over a thousand of them, so keep going. But the point is that I don't have these stringent requirements based on pleasing the algorithm. I come up with these video requirements to best meet the needs of the audience. And I know that thinking of audience needs can be a bit intimidating in the beginning. I mean, how are you, person soon to be on the internet, meant to know what so many people are feeling and experiencing? Well, a good place to start would be using yourself. What are your needs? What's your life like? Use that as the baseline. But stop thinking about the algorithm, stop thinking about YouTube as an entity, and just start thinking about people.